Hi everyone, welcome back to Alpha Hunters with me, Austin John Plays, the series that I just rebranded to make it sound like Shrine Hunters from Breath of the Wild, which was, oh my gosh, almost five years ago. Okay, I'm getting old. Today's episode, we're gonna take a look at the Crimson Bog, and on the screen right here, all of the stars are all of the placed alpha Pokemon. As always, you do need to quell the Frenzy Noble of this area in order for random Pokemon to be able to show up in their alpha forms, which I currently have. So we may see some random ones, but mostly we're gonna be focusing on all the placed ones. And speaking of the placed ones, we have a list of who they are. Taking a look at all the alpha Pokemon that can be inside of this region, we have in the lower levels, Pachirisu at 40, Hippowdon at 46. Do keep in mind that the male and female are different colors, that's not a shiny that you found. Carnivine is 43, Rhyhorn is 45, Skunk Tank is also 45, Tangrowth is also 45. Making our way at level 50, we have Onyx, Sligu, Roserade, and Toxicroak. I also want to note that level 50 is the required level for Sligu to evolve, so if you catch two, you can get one into Gudra. I mean, if you catch one, you can get it into Gudra too, so that's cool. Raichu is at 52, Licky Licky at 52, Honchkrow at 55. Ursaring is 55, which you can evolve at that level into Ursaluna with the method. If you don't know how, there's a link in the co in the top right. Cool. Yamega is 58, and the highest level one, Vespaquin, can appear at level 61, making it the highest level one that you're going to find in the area, except for Torterra. Torterra can be found here at level 65. Now in this video, I am going over the locations of all these. If you want to farm them up for experience, catch them, or, uh, or... I don't know, insert third thing here. I think the biggest, most important takeaway of this is just how to navigate this area, because I'll be honest with you, this is my least favorite area. Not so much because of how it's composed, but just a combination of things, like everything is just yellow and brown. It looks like Dwight Schrute's closet. It's true. And it's like, hey, cool, we got little ponds here and we have slightly different colored ponds here and we have slightly browner ponds here and slightly more browner ponds here and you got rivers and stuff. There's also a whole bunch of epic leaps to do over here and I'm gonna be going over all that. The first and only alpha that is north of camp is going to be the Raichu location. So if you come directly north of camp, you're gonna be seeing some rocks that you're gonna be able to scale fairly easily. Hold down the run button, find your right angle, Hit your jumps right, and you're gonna get up here no problem. Raichu's gonna be appearing over there. I don't think I really need to go over how to defeat a Raichu because, well, it's Raichu. It's, it was in the first one, it's been in almost every one ever since. Has it been in every one? I would have to fact check that, but yeah, I'm pretty, you're not gonna, you're fine, you're fine. You hit it with ground moves. Good job, Torterra, you're a big, you're, you're a big boy. Yes, you are. I also really like that in this game, Speed works so differently, so having Torterra as a very powerful yet very slow Pokemon isn't like the worst thing in the world, know what I mean? Because this area kind of works like a weird ladder going back and forth, we're kind of just going to be focusing on all of the lowland stuff, including that to the Gape Jaw Bog, and then we're going to be swinging around to the bottom and then ending up at the Bog Bound Camp. Our next location is gonna be right here, and I guarantee 110% you know exactly which Pokemans this is, which by the way, you could just run to this corner and do an epic leap, land right there, and boom, it's Tangrowth. Tangrowth is extremely bulky to the point that you getting off that first hit might really 110% be necessary for the lower levels. You're not gonna turn around, are you? Turn around, Tangrowth. I didn't get it, that's fine. Oh, and you have rest. Cool. Thanks, guy. Just a friendly reminder that all the Pokemon that you're going to be finding here have three of their moves that they should be having at this level, and then they're also going to be having a fourth move chosen from their tutor moves. I mean, can we finish you off with a strong style? Risk it for the biscuit, Star Raptor. Good job. Just for that, I'm actually going to give you enough grit to reach level three. Turning around and making our way over the river and through the woods. Wait, why do I have a star over here? Oh, the star is not here. The star is behind here. So with some crafty jumping, we're gonna be going up these stairs. I said some crafty jumping. Some crafty, j thank you. And continuing on further back, right to the open area, boom! We have ourselves a big... <laughs> Are there two? Wait, hang on. Are there two of these? Did I not write down that there's two? Wow, yeah, there are two Alpha Ursa Ring on this map. 
We have one over here, and then we have one down here at Ursa's ring. Do I need to knock both of them out? I don't think so. Oh, wow, that's a hyper beam. I was not expecting a full hyper beam in my face. Star Raptor, don't let me die. Good job, Star Raptor. Are you gonna go first? Oh, you are. Can you land this for a KO? I don't think you can. Oh, you did! Good job, Star Raptor. I might even keep you on the team. Oh, I have to replace you with the shiny I just found. Yeah, I found I found a second, the second form. So I have that going for me, which is nice. Heading just south of here, we're going to be finding ourselves an Alpha Pachirisu. I definitely recommend catching this level 40 Pachirisu as there is a quest to, oh look, I have a random Alpha Pachirisu in the same area. That's, can I, can I fight you both at the same time? Let's do it. Let's do it. Epic, epic battle. Yes. Double Alpha Pachirisus. What level is the wild one? Oh, they're faster. Oh, that, that wasn't good. 36 is the wild one. Okay, not too worried about that. All right, let's take care of the placed one who's level 40. Yeah, probably should have gone for a strong style. Torterra, you, you you got this dog? I believe in you. Good job. Are you going to die from the next hit? Aw, it's because your defense fell. It's okay, I appreciate you. When in doubt, Umbreon. Oh, but yeah, there's a side quest that you have to use a Pachirisu and only a Pachirisu on your entire team. And then you're going to be going against an Ursa Ring. And if you have the Alpha 30, uh, Alpha level 40 Pachirisu, the battle is much easier than just catching one of these wild ones. Unless, of course, you know, you want to use Pachirisu on your team, you're more than welcome to do that. But for me, I just wanted quick one and done, in and out, and I was good to go. Umbreon, you're the goat. Yes, you are. You're the cat and the goat. Continuing on with my very crude map markings, we're going to be heading just outside of the second camp. If you didn't know, the second camp is unlocked by doing the side request there. And in this bug, uh, there we go. The Alpha Hippowdon. Once again, just going to say it out loud for the people in the back, uh, the female and male Hippowdons do appear different. You, you didn't just find a shiny one if it's a different color than the one that's on the screen right now. Sorry about that. Oh, also, while you're here, definitely grab uh, two of the first forms. They're used for a quest, and you need to grab one male and one female and show them to the person who runs the clothing shop. Oh, there's a Geodude here. And then that's going to expand her inventory and she's going to have more, more clothes for you. Cool. I actually need to go check that new selection of clothes. Yes, I do. Uh, Torterra, you got this, right? While I'm just getting distracted talking about clothing. Yeah, you got this. Cool. Ooh, iron. I always need that. Making your way from the base camp, when you come down, you're going to be seeing the river directly ahead of you. And if you keep going straight, you're going to be seeing right there. This is a place that's designed for if you have Basque Legion to just come up here onto land. However, before you have Basque Legion, you actually can make your way over here. If you get enough momentum and then do a jump and then you could just walk over and boom, you're good. Down here, we're going to be finding three pretty dangerous Pokemon. Here is the new Sligu, who's going to be Steel and Dragon. It does have Hydro Pump, so be careful sending out a ground type Pokemon, especially one that's quad weak to water. Uh, but one single bullseye bulldozer <laughs> from Torterra should take out this Sligo. And I do believe its Pokedex entry requires you to defeat it with ground moves. Yep, as we see in the top corner. I know that I've used my Torterra for an extensive amount of these battles, but if you want to get one yourself, boom, right here. Level 65 Alpha Torterra. Located right at the home of Trials. Uh, what am I going to use for this? It has a rock move, so you can't use flying type Pokemon. It has a ground move. It has a grass move. It has, like, such a well-balanced... I guess I should just try my luck with Star Raptor. The problem is other Pokemon love to enter this battle. They really do. Stealth techniques. There's not a lot of coverage. Use some smoke bombs. Get in there safely. Get out there safely. Do the dang thing. Wu-Tang. 
I feel like it's like an actual boss battle and then you have like two of the cohorts on the sides. Oh, that's a powerful double edge. Star Raptor with the crit, it almost mattered. Now if you're thinking, hey, if you manage to defeat these Carnivines and hide around the sides, then you're gonna be able to get a free shot in in that Torterra. I don't know what it is, man, but that catch rate, Really? You missed the strong style? Oh. But the catch rate on this Torterra, like you could walk up behind him with a Gigaton Ball and you're just not going to be successful. Oh, Woodhammer. Nice recoil damage, Torterra. Thanks. Oh, I'm going to want these drops. What are the drops? Seed of Mastery and some Grit. I'll just grab them. And while we're here, pretty much next to where Torterra is, we're gonna be finding Toxicroak. Ah, oh, I always forget this thing's typing. I'm pretty sure it's poison and dark. So what, I gotta hit it with fighting moves? I'm assuming I could just bulldoze you. It's only level 47, which is good, but again, three more things join in. That's the hard part about this area, at the home of trials. Yeah, yeah, super effective, okay, great. For Terra, you gonna bulldoze him? Good job. Even if you try to flee from here, a lot of these Pokemon will actively chase you down. It is very inconvenient, to say the least. Well, great, that's the entire lower half. And taking a look, we have the upper half and the right bit. We can knock this right bit out. And also, this is a real epic jump that you can do as soon as you get here with just Weird Ear. If you come up here, circle around to the left, keep going, one piece of iron on the ground, keep running forward, dead tree in the middle, aim just to the left of this, hop off, land in the water, you could just walk to this shore. A lot of people think you need to like progress later in the area to reach here, not if you just make that landing. And you're good to go. Is that a random alpha Badoo? I don't think I have one of those. Oh, I that's right, I caught it, but then I lost my uh, my save. Remember? You guys saw that. We catch you with a feather ball? That'd be cool. <laughs> Love it. Heading straight down, there's going to be one alpha for us to find in the droning meadow. Droning? Drowning? Droning, yeah, droning meadow. And that's gonna be the alpha Yamega right in the middle of all of the Yanmas. Uh, Ah, uh, there we go. Now, Alpha Yamega is quad weak to rock. Also, for being a very fast dragonfly, dude, for some reason, just is not attentive of his surroundings at all. It's also helpful that the Yanmas are fairly, like, chill. Like, they ain't go, they ain't go snitch. Noith. Now, if we start to go up the giant ramp that exists here, once we get over here, Yep, overlooking the Cotton's Edge Prairie, you're gonna be finding yourself this big old Vespa Queen. And this one is... Oh, you're also quad weak to rock, right? Imagine hit landing Stone Edge, not me. Oh, but it's too stunned, we'll go for the strong style. And we only have one more up here, I'm pretty sure this is the Carnivine, oh golly. Listen, before playing this game, my least favorite Pokemon ever included Murkrow and Spearow. Just cause how annoying they were and they seem like jerks even in the anime. They, they have horrible catch rates, but somehow Carnivine has, has topped the list. No, Murkrow is still at the top cause Murkrow is in this game and a murder of Murkrow will murder you. Fantastic, now we're gonna make our way up the middle which I currently have a mass outbreak of Skunk Tank. Do I have a shiny skunk tank? Skunk. I have a skunk tank, I don't need one. I mean, I'm gonna clear it out anyways, cause you know, why not? That being skunk tank, who likes to hang out over there, right? <gasps> what? We got the baby one! Yeah, I'ma catch him, I'ma catch him. This is a randomly generated one, this is not placed. Definitely want him. Oh, and with the feather ball! Golly, I love feather balls. It has replaced the Pokeball for me. Oh, look at that! It's it's unknown, and he's hanging there like a little barbell. That's neat. I am gonna be definitely doing the unknown and the wisp videos. And the good news is, they're gonna be done by section, 
because as soon as you get access to Basque Legion, you are going to be able to get all of the wisps and I believe the unknowns. I'm probably going to do all the unknowns in one video at the end, but the wisps, I'm going to go area by area. So you could follow along with that. And once you get access to Basque Legion, we're going to be taking it from there. I could have sworn there was a hip out on. All right. Anyways, where's that skunk tank? Oh, wait a sec, wait a sec. There's a thing for this guy, right? You actually don't need a spoke bomb. Instead, these four pieces of wheat provide cover. <laughs> so you can just hide right here. Is someone attacking me? I think someone's attacking me. But you can just hide right here and aim at that skunk tank. Of course, you know, we, we are going to be taking him down because that's what we do here. Because we are hunting. We're alpha hunters. They think they're the apex predator. Not when I have to tear right here, listen, they're right to tear. Oh, that's, oh, nope, that's okay. I wasn't expecting a flamethrower and I wasn't expecting him to go first. But we could do an agile style bulldoze and a regular bulldoze. These base power 60 moves that like delay an opponent's turn. Oh, the best. The best. From the swampy area, we're actually gonna be going up the boulder roll slope. At the top of the boulder roll slope, you're gonna be finding yourself the entire diamond, uh, right, the, the diamond? Yeah, the diamond settlement. But to the left, you're gonna be seeing this big old slope. And heading up over here is probably one of the largest Pokemon in the game being Alpha Onyx. Absolute unit. Hang on, I just wanna go stand next to him. Yeah, he is very large. So large that it, standing next to him doesn't work that well. That's an that's an Alpha Torterra. You saw, look how big this thing is, right? By the way, if you don't know, if you try to stand where your Pokemon is, they will move out of the way for you. Oh, Leaf Blade, quite effective. Let's get out of the way. Good job. We are nearing the end from the Dynamond Settlement. If we just start to head up the mountain a little bit and we hug the right side, we are going to be finding ourselves an Alpha Rhyhorn. Oh, a randomly spawned Alpha Golbat. That's neat. Feather Ball. Wow, that caught. I'm surprised that caught, but neat. Oh, there's Rhyhorn, but yeah. Sporadic pieces of grass provide great cover for this. Oh, we caught it. I wasn't expecting that to catch. I'm gonna go break this rock real quick and then we're gonna go continue. From here, we only have three Pokemon in two locations left. From the Bravo Arena, which is unlocked after you help quell the Frenzy Noble Lilligant, we are going to backtrack down and at the Cloud Pool Ridge, there is going to be, during the night, Alpha Honchcrow, who is a big bird. I've now realized that I've used Torterra for every single one of these. I know in my previous video, I said that I was going to try uh, the new Lilligant. Wow, that did damage. Um, not going to lie, I haven't tried Lilligant. Torterra's just been doing too good. Too good. Yes, he does. Honchcrow's down. By the way, if you're going for Honchcrow, definitely recommend coming from above, because if you come from below, you're gonna aggro every single one of these Murkrows. Let me tell you something, these Murkrows can murk you. We are going to be encountering is actually one that you could have encountered even before coming here, and that's going to be the Alpha Licky Licky. This boy is super thick. Oh, he turned at the last second, oh no. Please don't have a nice move. You like to have a nice move, don't you? <gasps> I got to go first. Close combat, strong style, one hit KO. Let's go. Come on, Star Raptor. That's that's how thick he is. Oh, and there's the hyper beam. I'm not living that. He doesn't have a lot of health left. Go Growlithe. You know, I don't think this is gonna go too well for us. Oh, really? Really? Was that really necessary? I'm sorry, Growlithe. We shall avenge you. Time for the OG, the one and only. My Umbreon. Good job, boy. Level 68. That's pretty nice. For our very last alpha Pokemon, we actually need to make it daytime. The same location that Honchkoro previously was, you are going to be finding this big old flower, Roserade. This Roserade typically isn't too difficult. It's just so annoying because for you to catch it, it's like such a pain. 
It like, I don't know. It doesn't like the food I throw or something. I haven't really looked into its favorite food. Great. Oh, we got a large candy from that. Nice. And let me check my notes. I went over the jump to the right. I went over the jump to the bottom. I went over the early Raichu. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's going to be finishing up this. What are you looking at so aggressively? Are we targeted? Who are we targeted by? There's no one down there, dude. Looking so mean. Even crouching, he looks mean. <laughs> Although I kind of like this cinematic. If only this tree looked better. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for checking out this episode of Alpha Hunters with me, Austin John, of the YouTube channel Austin John Plays. The spiritual successor of Shrine Hunters till Breath of the Wild 2 comes out. Oh, let me know what spicy uh, random alphas that you caught down below. And if you managed to get yourself one of them alphas shiny, definitely tweet me at Austin John Plays. Love seeing those. Great. Thank you so much for checking this out. Until next time, Austin John out.